gosh, I'm so glad I didn't sell my Celestron Nexstar SLT mount when I got my EQ mount here because you can do astrophotography with them and there are some circumstances where even if you've got mounts like this it's actually you get a, a more likely get a positive outcome if you're going to be using your Altaz mount and if you're really tight for time and you just want to squeeze something in then the Altaz mount for me comes in dead handy and uh, you'll see why. Hi folks welcome back to the channel uh, this video is going to be a bit of time traveling between 2 p.m this afternoon and we'll keep flitting backwards and forwards to 2 a.m this morning because this morning I happened to wake up at about 2 a.m and looked out the window and right in front of me was Orion shining really brightly the, the whole constellation uh, now I've had clouds here for the best part of the last month so whilst ordinarily I'd go oh that's pretty and then go back to bed again uh, this time round I managed to wake myself up got downstairs and got out in the garden all without waking up Mrs Camping Astronomer and Miss Camping Astronomer it was a bit of a rushed session because I checked on um, my apps on my phone and it looked like I had about one hour of time available to me uh, so I used my Altaz mount instead of my sort of equatorial mount there the Altaz mount is a really fast to set up and whilst it might be you know, a little bit limited in terms of the exposure times that you can get uh, I just wanted to get something because I haven't done any deep sky for over a month my initial target was going to be the um, Orion Nebula, a nice easy one. Um, the trouble is that was really close to the roof of a house when I was down in my garden. I just wouldn't have got any time on it. Um, so I moved up slightly to the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. What I wanted to do was get just quarter of an hour's worth of exposures basically because that was going to be rapidly heading behind the roof of the same said house. That actually went down much faster than I expected it to and so I had to pick yet another target. Um, but you'll see all that as we trot through the video today. My name's John and I make videos on camping, astronomy and walking. If you like what you see in this video then please check my channel out as there may be others that interest you there. But in the meantime, let's crack on with today's video. So tonight I'm using my Altair Starwave 70 ED refractor on my Celestron Nexstar mount and a Canon 1300 DSLR. Just woken up and looked out and saw clear skies for the first time in about a month. So I've um, leapt out of bed and I'm trying to do the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula on my Altaz mount. And this is just me focusing on the star. Uh, Almitak, I think it is, which is right next to the Flame Nebula. Just trying to get in a heap of 10 second exposures now. You can see the roof of the houses appear in there, so I haven't got very long. I'm going to keep shooting until. Um, I can't get any more, but I get the feeling I'm only going to get about 15 minutes worth of exposures. I think that's it. That's the whole thing disappearing behind the roofs. Pebbles here is having an afternoon nap. Um, whilst I managed to not wake up Mrs and Miss Camping Astronomer, uh, the two cats did wake up and wondered what this crazy human was doing up in the middle of the night. So um, he had a bit of a mad half hour and he's now trying to sleep it all off, I think. 
So in the end, I only actually got four 10 second exposures on the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula, um, which is really nothing short of an unqualified disaster. And then the whole lot um, disappeared behind the roof of the house. Uh, but nonetheless, I decided I was going to process those pictures um, this morning just to see what comes up. And granted, they're not good pictures at all, but you can see the flame nebula and you can just about see the horsehead nebula with four 10 second exposures, which I did find was astonishing. So we'll uh, have a little look at those next. So I'll be the first person to say that the, you know, the noise in these photographs is absolutely horrendous. Um, and that's caused by the fact that I simply couldn't get any exposure time on them. Um, but nonetheless, I do find it incredible that with just four 10 second exposures, you can pick up two really faint objects like the Flame Nebula and the Horsehead Nebula. And uh, if you were fortunate enough to get an hour's worth of exposure time on, I think even with 10 second exposures, uh, you'd come up with a half decent picture. So having made the effort to um, get out of bed, basically for four 10 second shots, which I was really disappointed with, I thought I might as well look for something else to shoot and try and get something before it clouded over. And I happened to look to the east, which for me is a really good part of the world to look at. I've got fairly dark skies in that direction. There's no towns or anything for probably 20 or 30 miles in, in that direction for me. And up there high in the sky was the constellation Leo, which I don't normally get to look at until March because I like my bed and the idea of being up at 2 a.m. doesn't really uh, count as fun for me. So usually I see that much later in the year, but there it was in exactly the right spot. Uh, by now it was about half past two, quarter to three. And I thought I'd have a little shot at the Leo triplet a uh, little bunch of three galaxies that form a really nice little group and within um, the field of view of a small refractor like these two here, I actually use this one, um, you get a really nice sort of overall view of it. So I thought, well, let's see what we get with our Altaz mount on the Leo triplet. Okay, I've now changed target. And what I'm looking at is the Leo triplet, which you can just about see on the screen here. Orion's just disappeared. I'm going to have to try that again another day. But this is fairly high in the sky and a long way from the light. So I'm going to set this off and hope for the best. I'm going to do a run of 60 uh, 13 second exposures, see how that gets on. And then I'm going to try and do 200 shots. I'm using this setup because um, I woke up at about quarter to two, looked out the window, it was clear. Uh, so I sprinted downstairs, woke myself up. And this setup's faster to get out up and running than my EQ mount. So since I've waited over a month to get some deep sky astrophotography and it's just been cloudy, I'm going for uh, this because it's. I just suspected that by the time I'd set up, it might cloud over again. So here I'm hopefully at least going to get something. So now we're um, all set up and running. I'm going to go inside for half an hour or so because my hands are blinking freezing. And then I'll come out and set another run of images off. So here you can see a single frame, 13 second shot showing the three galaxies of the Leo triplet, two at the bottom and one in the top left. OK, 
Okay, it's now uh, quarter to four. You can hear the birds tweeting in the background. They're starting to wake up. Uh, it's clouded over now, so I think I've managed to get maybe 113 second shots, which isn't anywhere near enough really, but I'll take what I can get at the moment. So I'm now gonna call it a day, break it down, go back to bed again. Uh, luckily I'm not working this morning uh, which will give me a chance to process the pictures during the day and hopefully see that I've got something. So, sorry the camera's shaking a bit, it's blinking freezing outside at the moment and I'm shivering. So yeah, I'll um, bring you back tomorrow when I've done a bit of processing. Good night. So in the end, I got 124 13 second exposures at ISO 1600 on the Leo triplet. Uh, and they came out quite well after I processed them. Like I say, you know, you can get reasonable pictures using Altaz mounts, not award winning, but you can get a picture. And for me, last night, I simply wouldn't have had time to take this mount out and get it all set up. By the time I'd done that, it would have clouded over and I'd have got up at two o'clock for nothing. So overall, I'm actually quite pleased with the result. Uh, looks quite good. I got a little Brucey bonus fourth galaxy in the frame, a tiny little thing um, that's 20 or 30 million light years away, uh, which came out in the photograph as well and I've sort of blown it up so you get a feeling for that um, but yeah I'm just glad to have broken my deep sky duck for the last month to be honest as I've often said in my videos you, you have to take your chances when they turn up use whatever equipment you have because uh, it's always nice to get a picture out of it at the end of the day even if you know you feel you could have done better with different equipment or whatever um, yeah, so on that note, I'd say don't give up. Take your chances as they come along and just enjoy your, your astrophotography. It's nice being outside anyway. Um, yeah, so on that note, I will uh, wish you cheerio. So the results came out better than I thought they would for under half an hour's exposure. Uh, you can see the Leo triplet there more or less in the centre of the frame and the extra galaxy that I got is on the far right hand side. The most attractive member of the Leo triplet is called the Hamburger Galaxy uh, and here is an extremely blown up picture of it which again has come out better than I expected. So I blew up the other galaxy that um, just popped into the edge of the field of view called NGC 3593 and uh, that came out quite well as well.